So your group has just completed their activity, their exercise or project, and you're about to circle them up and you can start to see their eyes glaze over and they're groaning and you're about to start your debrief. If this sounds like you, I know exactly what you mean and this video is for you. Over the next couple of minutes, I'm gonna share with you four, five, six, wonderfully simple strategies that you can use that will transform your debriefs or reflection exercises from glum to fun. Most groups would probably tell you that the best part of their experience on your program are the activities. But let's be really honest here, just taking part in the activities is not necessarily a pathway to learning. In fact, the only way we can ensure that there's any form of learning, growth, learning or development, is if there is a reflection. Let me say that again, there is no learning without reflection. And so the focus of this video is to share with you some strategies that will help those debriefs not only be interesting, but engaging, informative, and rewarding. Now, as I've shared in some of my other videos, there is both an art and a science to the facilitation skill of debriefing or reflection. So let's focus first of all on the science of that facilitation skill, the debrief or the reflection. And here are my top five strategies. First of all, you want to sequence your conversation. That's right. It's actually a conversation. If you're just simply tacking it on to the end of the activity, any wonder you're getting eye rolls and uh, groans and so forth as you form that circle. But if you consider it as a conversation, something that you build up on, then you're more likely to actually engage the group and be able to extract some meaningful conversation from them. For example, and this is a bit silly, but you'll get the idea, none of us like saw that one person that we immediately fell in love with and approached them, said, hi, my name is Mark and uh, will you marry me? That, that's bizarre, yet that's how sometimes we approach a debrief with a group. You've got to buy them a drink, have a conversation, go out on a few dates, things of that nature will make a huge difference to whether in fact you actually get along, you know, whether you want to actually extract some meaning from that relationship and the same is true for your debriefs. And the best sequence that I know, which is the subject of some other videos that I've gotten content on Playmio, you can look for the links below, is the what, so what, and now what model. Very quickly though, what is focused on the facts, the what happened. The so what is making sense of what all those facts mean. And finally, the now what uh, actually basically asks the questions, what have we learned from this? What shall we do next time? What? So what, now what? Notice that there's a sequence. So at any time, if nothing else from this video, you will come away with, but remember this, that sequence is gonna save you so many of those occasions when you're standing there before your group and you're like a deer in headlights. You don't know what to say. <laughs> so what, so what, now what? Is a great model to start with. A lot of these strategies are pretty common sense, but, and you will have heard this elsewhere, ask open-ended questions. One of the reasons that debriefs meet with a lot of resistance is that some of the questions that we ask, even if they're purposeful, are often of the kind where you might say, are you feeling cold? Rather than asking, how are you feeling? Notice that second question opens up many, many options. You're gonna get more than one word answers. So when you ask open-ended questions, you're more likely to dive into a bit more curiosity and elaboration than if you just simply give them one or two choices to a response uh, for your question. The third strategy seems so obvious, but sometimes you need to state it anyway. Use a variety of techniques when it comes to debriefing and reflecting. Now, if your only technique is circling up and asking a series of questions, I mean, it's a legitimate technique, let's be fair, but if it's your only technique, you're really going to find it difficult after about the second or third time you've used it to engage your group. Now, if you go to playmio.com and look at the debriefing or reflection exercises, there are dozens and dozens of different ways that you can engage your group 
but invite them to debrief and reflect on their experience. They're all really different. And if you only used only 10 of them, for example, that would transform your debriefing experiences with your group. My next strategy, number four, is to start small. And this is a piece of advice I give in lots of different areas of facilitation, and it's just as applicable when it comes time for debriefing and reflection. When I say start small, I don't mean in terms of time, I mean in terms of the number of people. In the beginning, it can be really hard to ask a question to a larger group because everyone feels a little bit self-conscious about who's going to answer first. And we all know what happens. It's the most dominant, extroverted people who fill that space. If you want to avoid that and again, make it more interesting and engaging for people, ask a question, but invite people in pairs or maybe three people, but pairs work great, to be able to answer the question just in that little unit. And people find it far easier to talk with just one other person than it is to talk in front of a whole group. So again, if there's nothing else you take from this video, but this little strategy to start your debriefs is gather the group, ask them to form a pair, ask a question, and then check in with each other. And then if you feel that enough energy has been built, invite one or more of the pairs, not all of them, to actually share out to the larger group. And that brings us to our next strategy. Make it easy to see and hear one another. Sounds really obvious, doesn't it? However, let's say you're running a program outdoors and you have the group looking at you with the sun behind you. That's an immediate disengaging signal because they can't actually see you in the glare. Or if you're at a conference and your back is facing this really beautiful view through the window. Again, another reason why that can be a very distracting environment and another reason why they don't engage with you. But then it's also about being heard. I, one of the most frequent things I say as a facilitator is, take half a step in. Now when they take half a step, what's half a step? It's like digging half a hole. <laughs> half a hole is, is the same thing as a hole. But when they take a step in, it just builds the energy, builds up a little bit of anticipation, and importantly, it makes it easier to hear. And to be fair, makes it easier for me to preserve my voice because that's my most valuable tool when it comes to working with groups. Okay, before we finish up, let me give you one more bonus strategy that'll help make your debriefs more engaging and possibly even more entertaining and rewarding. And that is to use neutral responses or comments. So, I mean, you've asked the question and you're inviting other people to respond. But be wary when you answer with things like great or good answer or that's fantastic. That may actually be the case, but sometimes and for some people, those responses can actually shut down the rest of the conversation. Anyone who may have had something up their sleeve that they wanted to offer, but then heard you say great answer and they're going, oh, mine's not as great as theirs they may not actually offer their hand up to be able to make a response. Now we're not talking about everybody, but for some people. So keep that in mind. So if you can, a neutral response like, thank you, or uh, do other people agree with that? This can be a great way to check in with the group and also invite other contributions from people too, particularly if it's really clear that you're grateful for the response rather than shutting down that conversation. Okay, over to you. What do you do to make your debriefs or reflection exercises engaging or interesting or productive? What are those strategies? Drop down below to the comments and let me know. Uh, I will always, always, always respond more often than not. If I'm learning something new, I'm going to add it to my repertoire. But here's the bonus for everybody watching this video is that they can actually learn something from you as well. We're adding to the collective wisdom. And finally, if you happen to like this video, something resonated for you, let me know again, let me know in the comments what resonated most for you. But in particular, if you liked it, hit the like button. And if you'd like to get more of this content delivered to your inbox, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. Uh, we release content of this nature about every week. And I would love to be able to continue to serve you in all the way different ways that you're making a difference to the groups that you're working with. Thank you so much for watching. It really does make a big difference to me. I appreciate uh, the time that it takes to watch. And for now, I wish you all the fun in the world. Mm -hmm.